I'm the kind of person that loves a good project. I often have many projects going at once. I love planning projects and I'm pretty much always like 24 seven thinking of or planning a new project. Now, if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you may have noticed that I do these occasional planning videos, typically coinciding with the change of seasons. And a lot of times I don't even get to all of the projects that I'm planning, but I've decided that I am okay with that because part of the joy of the creative process for me is the planning process. And even though I don't get to all of those projects, I really do enjoy doing the research and trying to figure out how to make things. It is just something that I really love to do. So today I'm gonna to be talking about all the projects that I wanna make for the spring and summer. This is gonna be a little different in some of the planning videos that I have done in the past because I'm also gonna be talking about some non-garment sewing related projects that I have in the hopper. First, I'm gonna go over some of the garment sewing projects that I want to work on this spring and summer. I love sewing in the spring and the summertime. I think it is the best time to start learning how to sew. It is my personal favorite season. Two seasons, it's my, they are. They are my personal favorite seasons to sew for because you have access to a lot of patterns that are just quicker sews or even are more beginner friendly. The fabrics that I'm typically sewing with in the spring and summer are natural lightweight fibers like linen and cotton and rayon. And linen and cotton specifically are much easier to work with in general. I also feel like you get to kind of show off your wardrobe a little bit more because in the winter time, you're covering everything up with a coat. So if you have been pondering starting to sew your own clothing, this is the perfect time of year to start. So I bought some rayon, ditzy floral prints from Minerva. Now Minerva is based in the UK, I believe, and they ship internationally. This was my first time purchasing from them, but they shipped really fast and it arrived in the US pretty quickly, but then it like got stuck in Chicago for about a week, which was kind of driving me crazy. So it arrived like a day before I left for my trip home to Mississippi. Otherwise I might've tried to like squeeze out a project out of this fabric because it really is exactly what I was looking for, really pretty. So I'll show you some of the fabric. Now my favorite one is this kind of black, it's like a black background and it's got some really pretty greens and kind of coral and orange and pink and red in it. I thought this was just so beautiful. So I think what I would like to do with this fabric is make another pleated dress similar to the one that I talk about all the time that I love so much. And if you were watching last week's video, I talked about how I am working on a pattern for that dress. So I did a video last year showing how I made that pleated dress. It was kind of a dupe of a dress that I bought when I was on my trip to Spain last year. And I've worn the hell out of that dress. I love it and I think it needs to be a pattern. I just wanted to do a pattern with some bust cup options. So I do need to sew up some test garments for that pattern and I think I might use this fabric here for that. And I think I bought like three yards of this. I either bought two and a half or three yards of this. So I definitely have plenty to make a dress. I might even have enough to make like a cute little floaty flirty summer top. And because it's rayon, it's gonna be really nice and flowy. Um, it'll be perfect for that dress. I think I would also like to have an option for a tank top. And I have some tissue linen in my stash that I got from Joanne Fabrics. They have this really lightweight tissue linen in a white and a natural color. And I love that linen. I made a birdie button up out of that linen. And the last time I saw it at Joanne Fabrics, I bought a lot of yardage of it. I think I bought like five or more yards of it. I may have actually bought an entire bolt. I really like it. So. I do have some of that fabric that I think would be a really pretty cute summer pleated little tank top situation that I might also use as a sample for the pattern that I'm working on. Then I also have these other two ditzy floral prints. Again, these are also from Minerva. And this one's a black background with like a little pink and white flower and some green stems on it. And then I have the same print in a different colorway that's a navy blue. It's actually not really, I guess it's kind of, a, yeah, I guess it's kind of navy and it has white and orange flowers on it with little green stems. And for these, I'm thinking I might make either some summer dresses again, or maybe like a really cute little summer top, something similar to this. Actually, I was thinking of making, this is my Romy wrap top that I just kind of hacked into a short sleeve elastic waist top. And I have a blog post on how I did that. I'll link it down below. Um, but I thought these would be really pretty for some cute summer tops. I thought either the, um, oh, where is it? I pulled it out. So like the McCall's uh, 7969 would actually be a really cute little top for that. I've made, a, I've made a top out of this before in a linen that's really pretty. The only thing is I bought the wrong size of this pattern. I got the larger size range for this pattern. And I actually probably need like a medium or a large in this pattern. 
So um, I could probably grade it down. But anyway, this is a this is a contender M7969. I've talked about this pattern before. I think it's a really great pattern and it comes as a dress and it's really easy to just chop it off into a top. I also have this new look pattern that I found at the thrift store. I'm pretty sure this is a vintage pattern. New look 6064. And I have actually made a dress out of this pattern before. Now, when I made the dress, it was, I kind of hacked it to have long sleeves. I didn't love how it turned out. I don't think, I think it would just look better sleeveless as it's originally designed to be. But I have made this dress and I've kind of done some fitting on it. So I think it would be a relatively quick sew now that I kind of have worked out any of the, you know, personal fit issues with this particular pattern. I think it'd be really, really cute in one of these little ditzy floral prints. I think these also could be really cute as the poppy blouse. This is also another pattern that I sell that I created last year. I was looking back through some of the tester photos on the website and several people made the poppy blouse out of like a patterned rayon type fabric and they turned out so cute. So that I was getting really inspired by the tester photos and I might actually end up making something similar to that out of this fabric as well. I also drafted a little wrap dress last year for my trip to Spain and it turned out really cute actually. And I really wanted to make it out of a rayon. I didn't have a rayon. I ended up making it out of this like polyester designer dead stock fabric that I found. But I think it would be perfect for rayon. So that is also a possibility for one of these fabrics. So I also mentioned that I purchased some linen and the black linen is in my closet, but basically I got several yards of a black linen rayon blend that Joanne carries. It's kind of a lightweight linen. It hangs really nicely. I've made a pair of pants out of the kind of natural color linen that they have. It's the same fabric. I just want to make myself a pair of black linen pants with like a simple patch pocket, kind of like the longer utility patch pocket on the front, some simple patch pockets on the back, just elastic waist pants. And I actually have a pattern that I drafted for myself. I have a video here. Everything that I'm talking about that's relevant to this video, I will link it in the description below the video. But I did make myself some little self-drafted elastic waist pants and shorts last year, and I plan to use that for those black pants. Now, if you are not interested in drafting your own pants, another pattern that I highly recommend that is fantastic. I've talked about it so much here. It's perfect for beginners. If you're just kind of new to sewing and sewing pants, is the McCall's, I think it's 8221, do I have it over here? Um, I'll put it up on the screen, but it's a little elastic waist shorts pattern that I just lengthened into pants and have worn that one a lot as well. It's a great, great pattern. I also have some natural colored linen here that I wanna make some more natural colored linen pants out of. I have two pair of natural colored linen pants already and I love them. For this pair, I wanna switch it up just a little bit and make a pair of pleated front wide leg pants. This linen also matches a sample that I made for my birch vest and I think it would be really cute as a little set. I was considering using the Protea pants from Paradise Patterns. I think that is a beautiful pattern. I think it would be work out really well for pants like this is exactly what I want. But I'm also kind of curious to try a pants pattern that I found in my Letterlow kit. I used that kit last year to make a little black dress and really liked how it turned out. It was actually a lot of fun to use and it's definitely geared more toward people that have a little bit more experience sewing. But if you're looking for something that's like a quick drafting project, I think that Letterlow kit is fantastic. And there is a pants pattern in there for a pleated wide leg pants pattern that I think would be perfect. And I'm really curious to see kind of how the pants fit and kind of test out a different type of pattern. The dress that I made with that kit was really simple and was just kind of like a primer for me kind of getting to know the kit a little bit better. But I think I want to try to make a pair of pants. So I think I'm kind of leaning more toward the letter low kit. But again, I think if you're looking for a wide leg pleated pant and you don't want to draft your own pattern, the Protea Pants by Paradise Patterns looks like a really, really cute pattern. And it has an option for a flat front pant as well. And last but not least, I'm also considering making like a swimsuit cover-up style dress. When I was on the beach, I was kind of wishing that I had something kind of like that, just a really simple dress that looked really cute, but was also really comfortable and flowy and roomy. And I thought that that would just be a really great summer dress to have. So I've been considering making a pattern for a kind of grown on sleeve wrap style or faux wrap style dress, similar to this one that I found on anthropology.com. Now, one of my early videos that I did here on the channel was for a kind of kimono style wrap top. 
And it's really just, it's not a kimono. Um, I don't want anybody to be like, oh, it's not a kimono. I know it's not a kimono, but it's like, it's a kimono style. It has that kind of grown on sleeve. It's got the sort of wrap front. And I've had a few people ask me for a pattern for that. And I, I feel like that pattern is very simple. And there are actually quite a few patterns out there that are very similar to that. If you're looking for one, I know, well, actually I can't think of any off the top of my head, but there are a lot. If you go to like the foldline.com, you could probably look up, you know, kimono or dolman sleeve wrap top or something like that. So I thought it'd be fun to kind of switch it up a little bit and have that same, you know, oversized grown on sleeve with the wraps top and then maybe have the waist be cinched and tied in the back in a really pretty way. So that's something I'm kind of thinking about doing. I don't know if or when, <laughs> again, we're getting back to me planning projects that may never happen. Um, I don't know when that will happen, but it's something that I'm kind of um, sitting with. I've already started kind of drafting it out a little bit. So uh, yeah, that's something that's kind of marinating in my brain a little bit. Now for non-wardrobe sewing projects, I am thinking of some home projects and I've been, I've been teasing this a lot and I'm sorry that I keep talking about it and not actually doing it. I've been trying to look for something. I have some very specific ideas in mind for some home projects that I want to do around our apartment. And one in particular is I would really like to kind of spruce up our dining area. So our living room, kitchen and dining room, it's all kind of an open concept plan. And it's, it's very basic in there. I kind of have a table and some chairs and a rug and a plant that's, you know, limping along, but I've been watering it more. So it's starting to kind of come back to life a little bit, but I would really like to make that space look a little bit nicer and more inviting. Right now it just feels very bare. And um, I have a thrifted table and chairs that needs a little bit of TLC. The chair, one of the chairs in particular has a, you know, broken pieces on it. I've already bought the pieces to fix it. I just need to do it. The other chairs need the cushions recovered and then the table probably needs some sanding and refinishing. But I would like to find some furniture like a sideboard or a buffet to go along the back wall in our dining area and kind of merchandise that a little bit and fix it up and make it look nice. There are other projects in our apartment that I would like to get to. Um, I tend to neglect our home decor type stuff. I spend a lot of time working on sewing projects and I kind of have had this mindset, like I don't want to invest too much time into our space because I always feel like we might move soon, which has kind of been our, you know, MO for a long time. We have moved quite a lot, but I've gotten to the point where I'm like, okay, enough is enough. I've got to start investing more. I have tons of ideas. I have many Pinterest boards dedicated to home decor. I definitely know what I like. I just need to start acting on it. So the first project in that regard that I would really like to work on is our dining area. And if we go a little further into the realm of, you know, lofty projects that may or may not ever happen, <laughs> I've also been really interested in trying to design a small home for me and my husband. So we rent right now and we have been for a while wanting to buy a house. And the market right now is just a little bit, it's, it's a weird market. There's really not a whole lot available. It's getting a little bit better. Um, but everything that we have found has not been really even close to what we want. And again, while I was away in Mississippi, I was thinking about it and I was like, what? what if we built a small house? That may be crazy, but maybe it's not that crazy. I do have a degree in architecture. I was once actually a licensed architect for like, maybe like a year. <laughs> once I got my license, I was like, I don't wanna do architecture anymore. But I really am still interested in residential architecture. I, again, have a Pinterest boards dedicated to, you know, small homes that I think are really beautiful. And it would also be an opportunity for me to put my training to work. And I think if it was a, I think if it was a project that I was doing for myself and my family, it would be something that I would enjoy and get a lot of fulfillment out of. So I have started actually doing some research and planning for that. It is still very, 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 very preliminary. It may not happen anytime soon. It may be something that happens, you know, a decade or more from now, or it may happen sooner, who knows, but it is something that's kind of fun to work on. It's just a fun side project that stimulates my brain and my creativity. I almost didn't even want to share it here because I mean, I'm sure people have opinions about whether or not you should buy or build your own home. And I don't really want anybody's advice on it at this point because it is such a new idea, but I decided to share it because it's an idea that scares me. And I do often get comments from people when it comes to garment sewing and other creative projects that they are 
fearful of starting something new that they've never done before or something that seems hard. My advice, if they had ever asked me what my advice was, would be to just start. And I'm kind of trying to take that same approach with other projects, like the projects in my home and potentially one day building a home and just starting the process, just taking one step. Like this weekend, I sat down and made a spreadsheet of every possible expense I could think of with the knowledge that I know I'm not gonna think of everything in one day and there's gonna be more that comes up, but it's like, I've started. I've started the process of planning something and I got really excited and it was very invigorating. It felt good to plan something scary and it's starting to feel more and more possible. I've had a lot of different creative ventures in my life and I've definitely dabbled in a lot of different creative things and I have had a few different versions of a creative business and it's a lot of fun. I'm not gonna lie, it's a lot of fun. Like the very first time that I ever started a business and ever put myself out into the world as a, as a solopreneur creative person, I mean, this has been over a decade ago. Once I did it, the sense of purpose and fulfillment that I got from that was so immense that, I mean, I really have not looked back since. And so I've just gotten really comfortable with the idea that I can pursue any creative endeavor that I want to. It may or may not work out, but that's not a reason not to at least try and explore it a little bit. I'm allowed to change my mind if I want to. Um, I've definitely changed my mind a lot over the last decade. And every time that I have pivoted and gone in a new creative direction, I feel like I've gotten better at being creatively agile. Is that a thing? Creatively agile? I think that's a good term to describe it. So anyway, those are my plans. Those are the things that I want to be working on. I'll definitely be sharing more of a variety of things. Eventually on this channel, I immediately have projects that I want to sew for sure. Sometimes I can get a little bit burned out with the garment sewing, but I always come back to it. Like just a couple of weeks ago, I was thinking, man, I'm ready for some different projects. I need to switch it up a little bit. The entire time that I was away on vacation, all I could think about was all the things I wanted to get back and sew. And I couldn't wait to come home and touch all my fabric and wash it and dry it and fold it and just be with the fabric. So I always come back to the garment sewing, but I definitely have some other projects that I wanna work on eventually. And as those things develop, I'll probably be sharing them here. I think that's it. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I release new videos in the future. And let me know if you like these types of planning videos. You know, this was a week where I was feeling a little bit overwhelmed with all the things that I wanted to do and I wasn't even sure where I wanted to start, but I thought I can sit down and talk about all my plans. <laughs> like I'm definitely excited about all the plans. And thank you for being here. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.